Hello, my name is Ken Matuzak, and I'd like to discuss with you a topic today which is sometimes forgotten and often misunderstood. That is, the calculation of optimum dwell times for quantitative MRM experiments. First of all, what is a dwell time? A dwell time is simply the time the instrument pauses to take a measurement for each of the MRM transitions in the method. In order to calculate this, what we need to do is start with a representative chromatographic peak from our overall chromatogram. The best peak to choose is often the most narrow peak. This is our worst case situation, the least amount of time that we have compared to all the other chromatographic peaks. And what we want to do is we want to look at the chromatographic peak and we want to look at the peak width at the base of the peak. I want to ignore all uh, tails and things like that. I just want to look at the core of the peak and it comes down. And I simply want to take the retention time at the end of the peak and subtract away the retention time at the beginning of the peak and produce a chromatographic peak width. Most of our chromatograms on the x-axis have minutes as the axis. If you do, your number will be expressed in minutes. Dwell times are typically expressed in milliseconds. So we must first convert from minutes to milliseconds. So we have 0.1 minutes times 60 seconds per minute times 1,000 milliseconds per second. And if I cancel units, like I learned in freshman chemistry, minutes, minutes, seconds, seconds, I find out I'm left with milliseconds. 0 0.1 times 60 is 6. 6 times 1,000 is 6,000 milliseconds. This is the total time of the chromatographic peak into which I must fit all my experiments. What experiments am I talking about? I'm talking about the measurement of the precursor to product ion MRM transition. The next thing to consider is how many compounds do I have in my method and how many transitions per compound are there. If I have a compound, a method with multiple compounds and multiple transitions, this is going to further divide up my time. Mathematicians will tell us in order to accurately measure the profile of this chromatographic peak, I need a minimum of 12 data points. Okay, 12 data points of what? 12 data points of each transition that I will be measuring. For purposes of this calculation and to provide us a little bit of comfort level, we're going to use the number 20 because if we have 20, we will always have greater than 12, and 20 is a nice round number to use. So, if we take our 6,000 milliseconds, and we divide this by 20 data points, and again, 20 data points of what? 20 data points of each compound, and for this example, let's pretend that we have six compounds to quantitate, okay, and of each transition for each compound. Let's say I'm working in a regulated industry. In that industry, I'm forced to have a quantitative MRM transition as well as a qualitative MRM transition. So in this case, I will have two transitions per compound. Okay? This is our nice generic equation. Our peak width in milliseconds divided by the number of desired points per transition divided by the number of compounds, divided by the number of transitions per compound. And if we calculate this, 6,000 milliseconds divided by 20 is 300. 300 divided by 6 is 50. 50 divided by 2 is 25 milliseconds. 25 milliseconds would be the optimum dwell time for this 0.1 minute peak if we were measuring six compounds and two transitions of each, and desired 20 data points for every MRM transition. What happens if I get too few transitions? 
Let's say I did my calculation incorrectly and I only got five data points. One, two, three, four, five. You'd quickly see that I may not accurately quantitate this peak because I would only be quantitating an area. Possibly sometimes I'd be quantitating there, possibly sometimes I'd be quantitating there. It would be inconsistent and inaccurate. What if I have too many data points? If I get too many data points, I often see irregularities in the peak because of the spray of the ion source or other factors. This wouldn't be a problem except that we're going to be processing batches of data and we're going to use automatic integration tools and these tools when they integrate a peak look for slope changes and when they see a slope change they will simply quantitate that portion of the peak and then I will also be inaccurately measuring that peak. It's also possible that I will have to fix many, many peaks with manual integration. And in most industries, manual integration must be documented and explained, and that would be a lot of work. I'm hoping that this is now a clear explanation to you of how to calculate an optimum dwell time for your quantitative method. Thank you.